Section 2. Mechanisms for Quantum Consciousness? Question mark. Gray explains how Penhoff's linkage between qualia and curvatures in space-time can provide solutions for some of the traditional problems associated with the concept of qualia. Firstly, the difficulty of the vastness of qualic experience. How can this be encompassed within the physical universe? Gray starts by pointing out that there are roughly 10 to the power of 107 Planck volumes in the human brain, and that each of them can theoretically be in one of a very large number of states, depending upon such factors as the edge length and the spins of the edges. If then, according to Penhoff, one quale might be one pattern and another quale a different such pattern, then in principle, the theory allows for the physical production and storage of an infinite number of quale. Gray next looks at the traditional problem of whether qualia should be conceived of only as single isolated sensory atoms, or whether, for example, very complex multimodal scenes can also be accepted as qualic experiences. Gray says that, according to Penhoff, when self-collapse occurs, only one pattern is chosen but that pattern is a very complex entity. In this way, the theory attempts to provide a physical basis for both the simplicity of relatively isolated qualia, the sound of a high C played on a flute, and the complexity of a total conscious multimodal scene. Hammerhoff provided the suggestion that microtubules would be suitable hosts for quantum processes. Microtubules are long hollow tubes of protein running across the inside of cells. One traditional theory about microtubules is that they hold the structures of the nerve cell in position and maintain its integrity and motility, together with microfilaments and intermediate filaments. There is evidence to suggest that they can also transport proteins and other materials within the cell. Synaptic vesticles, for example, move along microtubules towards the synapse. Microtubules are composed of tubulin protein dimer subunits. Dimers consist of two identical molecules linked together. The dimers each have hydrophobic pockets that are 8 nanometers apart and that may contain delocalized electrons. These are electrons in a molecule which are not associated with a single atom. Hammerhoff proposed that these delocalized electrons are close enough to become entangled. He also suggested that the tubulin subunit electrons would form a Bose-Einstein condensate. These are the most ordered form of condensed matter possible. The crucial distinguishing feature of both Einstein condensates is that the many parts which constitute this ordered system not only behave as a whole, they become a whole. Their identities merge or overlap in such a way 
that they lose their individualities entirely. Hammerhoff also proposed that the condensates in one neuron could extend to many others via gap junctions between neurons, forming a macroscopic quantum feature across an extended area of the brain. The idea was that when the wave function of this extended condensate collapsed, it would generate consciousness via proto-experience, which the theory believes is embedded in the geometry of space-time. This process is also the proposed source of the non-computationally act of the non-computational access mathematical the non-computational access to mathematical understanding required in Penrose's theory. David Rose expresses these ideas as follows. Penrose points out that there is an unusual mathematical structure to the microtubule molecules. Penrose's suggestion is that they can undergo a kind of resonance such that quantum wave functions are generated within the, molecule, the microtubules. His theory, then, is that when you make a decision or have an experience, this involves the collapsing of the wave functions, resolving them into some particular state of the microtubule proteins. One of Gray's major criticisms of the quantum mechanical model of qualia generation is that it fails to explain how the different types of qualia, shape, color, sound, smell, taste, touch, etc., are produced. The theory proposes that qualia enter into consciousness when a quantum wave function collapses. It then postulates that a reduction in a given region gives rise to the corresponding type of qualia. But, as Gray points out, there's no reason within the quantum mechanical model to link a given type of qualia with a given region. The model gives an account of the event orchestrated objective reduction of the wave function that causes something or other to enter consciousness, but not of what. The explanation of what kind of qualia is, as Gray says, smuggled into the model by way of knowledge stolen from elsewhere. By this reference to stolen knowledge, Gray is pointing to the already well-established correlation between certain kinds of qualia and certain areas of the brain. For example, area V4 gives rise to the experience of color. But Penhoff's quantum explanation fails to identify any mechanism which could account for this fact. As Gray puts it, all we do have is a series of brute correlations between, on the one hand, activity in this or that part of the brain, and on the other, the occurrence of this or that kind of qualia. Given this, it seems to be the case that this quantum mechanical correlation with qualia merely shadows the other two kinds of non-explanatory correlations that have already uh, been established, namely that between qualia and functions and that between qualia and neurophysiology. For example, the correlation between color qualia and area V4 of the brain. Gray complains that all we end up with is the idea that qualia ha have three sets of non-explanatory relationships with respectively 
functions, neurophysiology, and quantum mechanics. As Gray insists, the presence of a systematic relationship on its own is no more than a brute correlation. To advance to the status of a scientific theory, one needs an account of just why the systematic relationship takes the form that it does. No one has yet achieved this for the brute correlations of either function or neurophysiology with qualia, whether these are considered separately or jointly. Is there any reason to think that a brute correlation between quantum mechanical processes and qualia would fare any better? Gray speculates, however, that there might indeed be something more to be hoped for from the Penhoff theory. He says, both functionalists and physiologists have so far been content to rest with their correlations as indeed brute. Neither have anything to say at all about the nature of qualia. These just are either either identified with function or in Sekhanov's graphic phrase, secreted by the brain. The Penrose-Hammerhoff theory, in contrast, does say something about the nature of qualia. They are superpositioned patterns embedded in fundamental space-time, Planck scale geometry. To be more accurate, a quale is the particular one among these proto-conscious patterns chosen at any given moment to achieve qualehood due to orchestrated objective reduction in a microtubule system located in a sufficiently highly organized brain. Gray comments that this does indeed represent progress, albeit modest, over the other two forms of brute correlation. To say something about the nature of qualia is already an advance. It at least recognizes that something needs to be said. Gray had earlier asked, what advantage then, if any, does the theory derive from its having linked protoqualia to the fundamental fabric of space-time? The answer, I think, is that a particular quale can be characterized by a particular proto-conscious pattern in fundamental space-time. This provides an explanation for the differentiation of qualia across, for example, different sense modalities.